wealth, power, influence, and football. That's Florentino Perez, the demigod of the footballing world. When you hear those words, you probably think of famous billionaires like Elon Musk or Bill Gates. But there's one man who has managed to amass unbelievable wealth, power, and influence all through the beautiful game of football. That man is none other than Florentino Perez, the longtime president of the mighty Real Madrid. Now, Florentino didn't start out running one of the biggest sports franchises on the planet. Like many of us, he had to work his way up from humble beginnings. Florentino was born in 1947 in a working-class neighborhood of Madrid called Fortaleza. His father was a shop worker and his mother a homemaker. Nothing too glamorous there. But young Florentino was an ambitious lad. He studied hard, got his civil engineering degree, and by the 1970s was already making moves in the construction industry. Smart kid. Before long, Florentino was heading up big companies like OCP Construcciones and later the massive Grupo ACS, one of Spain's largest construction firms. By the late 1990s, Florentino had transformed himself into a multi-billionaire tycoon. But you know what they say, when you've got billions in the bank, owning a world-famous football club is the next must-have billionaire status symbol. In 2000, the always enterprising Mr. Perez decided it was time to take over the reins at his beloved Real Madrid. This was the dawn of a truly wild era at the Bernabeu. Florentino Perez, he's a clever businessman through and through. During his campaign for president, he made this sly promise to bring in Barcelona's sweetheart and one of the best players in the world, Luis Figo, if elected. Cheeky move, trying to poach one of your biggest rival stars right off the bat. But it works like a charm. The Real fans loved the idea and Florentino won the vote. As soon as he got those presidential keys, Figo was one of the first Galacticos through the door, leaving the Barcelona faithful in utter shock. But Florentino was only just getting started with his Galactico revolution. His big idea? To basically buy up all the most talented and famous players on the planet to construct this super team of superstars at Real Madrid. We're talking genuine legends like Zinedine Zidane, Ronaldo, David Beckham and more, all arriving in successive summers. It was like Florentino was just bashing the buy button on a FIFA career mode save file. Except, you know, instead of splashing virtual coins, he was dropping hundreds of millions of real dollars to assemble this dream team. Must be nice having that kind of money to throw around, right? And you know what? For the first few seasons at least, Florentino's Galactico experiment actually worked an absolute treat. With all those iconic talents joining forces in the white shirt, Real went on an utter trophy bender. We're talking back-to-back -back Spanish league titles in 2001 and 2003, plus their ninth big-eared Champions League crown in 2002 to really stick it to their rivals. Having a basically unlimited transfer budget clearly gave them a ridiculous advantage over the mere mortals of world football. Those early Galactico years must have felt like a dream for the Real faithful. Just picture them rocking up to the Bernabeu with pupils the size of dinner plates, giddy at the prospect of watching Zidane, Ronaldo, Figo, Beckham and company work their magic. But, as we all know, keeping that many colossal egos and bank balances satisfied is easier said than done, even for a maverick billionaire like Florentino. Before long, rumors started swirling about locker room disharmony, player power struggles, that kind of ultra diva stuff. And when the trophy suddenly dried up for a few seasons in the mid-2000s, the cracks really started to show in Florentino's Galactico philosophy. By 2006, despite all the success he brought, the big man decided to tender his resignation as president. A lot of critics reckoned his whole experiment in buying up the biggest names had failed in the long run. Maybe the Galactico galaxy had just collapsed in on itself from too many supermassive egos orbiting so close together. But they should have known you can't keep a tenacious billionaire construction magnate down for too long though. By 2009, Florentino was back in the Real hot seat and ready to double down on making the Galacticos great again. Who did he bring in this time? Oh, you know, just casual global icons like Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema and Kaka for the low price of around £200 million combined. As a fan trying to afford tickets, those transfer fees would be enough to give you heart palpitations. 
But not a problem when you're a multi-billionaire building magnate. Under managers like Jose Mourinho and later Zinedine Zidane, Florentino's new batch of Galacticos re-established Real as one of the most fearsome teams in Europe and Spain. They went on to win multiple Champions League and La Liga titles over the next decade, as Barcelona finally had a worthy rival again. Of course, having effectively unlimited money helps when it comes to achieving sustained success like that. But give credit to Florentino. Not every billionaire club president spends their riches that wisely. He understood the incredible marketing value of signing the biggest names, and Olympics building proved to be no problem either. Despite all his successes though, Florentino still wasn't satisfied. This ultra-competitive businessman always wants more. More money, more power, more trophies. So, in 2021, he decided to try and break away from UEFA entirely by creating the wildly controversial European Super League. The basic idea was to have a closed-off competition featuring only the richest, most prestigious clubs like Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United, Liverpool and so on. Of course, this went directly against the general principles of promotion slash relegation in the Football League and a principle on which football has been built on. No wonder it sparked massive outrage from fans, players, managers and governing bodies alike. UEFA was absolutely furious and threatened to ban any club who participated from their official competitions. In response, Florentino basically said, Bring it on, we'll see you in court. In a prime example of the man's sheer will and determination, Florentino took UEFA all the way to the European Union's highest court over the right to form this breakaway league. And guess what? In late 2023, the EU court actually ruled in his favour, saying UEFA had abused its monopoly position. Talk about using influence on the highest level. Some fans still hated the idea of killing off open competition, but Florentino insisted it would actually boost revenue and help modernise the sport for a new generation of fans. Whatever his reasoning, you've got to admire the sheer audacity of a man who tried to revolutionise the entire football establishment. As if just being the most powerful man in world football wasn't enough, Florentino also decided in the 2010s that Real's iconic Santiago Bernabeu Stadium needed a major facelift. So, in classic Florentino fashion, he dreamed up some seriously ambitious renovation plans. We're talking about a massive retractable roof that can open and close on demand, gigantic wraparound video screens to really amp up that big match atmosphere, the kind of bells and whistles that would make even the fanciest modern stadiums green with envy. Wow factor indeed. Now, at first, they floated around a budget of around 500 million euros for all these wild upgrades, which is already more than enough to make a mere muggle like us faint at the thought. So it was absolutely no surprise at all when the final cost of the Bernabeu's makeover ballooned all the way up to an eye-watering 1.2 billion euros by 2024. To put that in perspective, that's enough to comfortably buy elite clubs like Dortmund or even their arch rivals Atletico outright and still have change left over for generational talents like Haaland and Mbappe. Of course, someone had to foot that massive bill. So who did the business savvy Florentino turn to for financing? Why, none other than the global banking giant JP Morgan of course. Those two entities joining forces is a real meeting of wealth, power and influence if there ever was one. Despite appearing to have everything a man could want in the material world, there was one tragic event in Florentino's life that clearly shook him. That was when his beloved wife of over 40 years, Maria Angeles Pietina Sandoval, passed away from cancer in 2012 at the age of just 62. By all accounts, Maria had been Florentino's biggest supporter through all his business conquests and Real Madrid tenures, so losing such a devoted life partner understandably left him devastated. Perhaps it was this personal loss that motivated him to pour even more passion and energy into his life's other great love, Real Madrid Football Club. In any case, the story of Florentino Perez is really the ultimate rags-to-riches tale. From growing up relatively poor, to becoming an elite construction billionaire, to exerting his wealth and influence over the entire world of football. It's all definitely a script worthy of the Hollywood big screen treatment someday. Love him or hate his methods. You have to admit Florentino has a master level of power, respect and sway over the beautiful game that few people in history could ever dream of.
He is the ultimate Galactico of football presidents and administrators.